Hello and welcome to episode 22 of the Writing Talk podcast with me, Mikey Campling. And today in this week's episode, after a quick scamper through my bits of news, we are going to have a look at the main topic, which this week is all about how long is it going to take you to write that damn novel? And then we'll kind of skip the um, writer's clinic feature because this kind of session is, is almost like one big writer's clinic feature and then it will of course be a writer's toolbox section when I'll be telling you about some software which I've been having a look at. Welcome to the Writing Talk podcast, a show that helps you to build your skills as we go on our writing journey together. Okay, so what have I been doing over the last sort of week and a bit? And again, sorry that these aren't coming out regularly at the moment. I'm kind of like a quite a busy writing person at the moment, and I will try and, you know, get them as regularly as possible. Okay, what have I been doing? Well, I went to quite a cool um, launch party the other day, which is unfortunately not, you know, um, bottles of champagne and canapes in a swanky hotel, but actually a Facebook launch party, which... You know, which are nice, uh, they're good fun. And you, you may have been to one. If not, there's usually a few kicking around. This one was run by um, a sci-fi writer, a very popular writer called uh, Nathan Van Koops. And you may have heard of his books, um, Times Like These. I think I've got the title right. There'll be proper links in the show notes. But that's a free novel, which is worth looking at. You can look for that on Amazon. Uh, I'm reading it at the moment, actually, and enjoying it so far. So... It's worth a look at, and um, there's a trilogy now, and this was the third book in the trilogy was launching, and he kindly invited me along, along with lots of much bigger names, people like Rice Walker and so on, who are quite big in the time travel uh, writing fraternity, if there is such a thing. But the nice thing about these Facebook events is that apart from getting to meet um, sort of lots of other cool writers, we get to meet lots of readers and lots of different people from around the world. The downside for me is that the big audience for them is probably in the USA, and of course the time difference means that most of it happens when I'm safely tucked up asleep. But um, interesting nevertheless, and, and really, you know, it was, it was a, a privilege to be invited, so I was very happy to go along on that. And that kind of ties in because it was a question that came up in that um, launch party was that somebody commented, you know, how long does it take you to write your novels? And I thought, actually, that's something that not all that many people talk about. And and you forget once you've been in it a while, you forget that that somebody, you know, newer to the game uh, or just thinking about diving headfirst into writing hasn't really got a handle on yet. So there's that. I'll go into that in a minute, of course, in the main topic of the show. And I've also... um written in quite a short space of time a new short story and because at cheat code my sort of sci-fi cyberpunk tale is going quite well i thought what i'd do is i give people a bonus story to tie them over because it's going to be a while before the second one comes out so um although i'm in the planning stage of that so I, the, a, a short story coming out which would just be for newsletter subscribers so those people who go on to um my website mikeycampling.com forward slash free books and sign up there will be getting it um, although it's not up there yet, so you know you might want to hang fire to go and sign up. So it's nearly there. It's it's uh, about six thousand words. I say that because that ties into our main topic, and that's kept me quite busy. And it, and it's nice to take a, a break from working on endless revisions of a much longer project to sort of sit down and write a snappy short story. And it's nice. I think that's that's quite good practice, good habit to kind of change what you're doing from time to time, just to just to keep your creative brain cells active and fresh. And on that note, I'll dive into the main topic. Right, so the main topic is about how long is it going to take you to write this blinking novel that you decided you want to write, or perhaps you've already started, or, or what, I don't know what stage you're at. But I kind of like on this podcast to, to go back to basics and build forward, because I don't like to assume people um, know too much or have experienced too much though some of you I'm sure have got much more experience and noise than me but anyway it's kind of disconcerting at first when everybody starts using sort of thousands of words as a unit it's a bit like um, you know if you first start playing around with photoshop or something or with, or with working on websites and things like that and you kind of have to start working in pixels all the time how big is a pixel how big is a thousand pixels and you know you, you get a handle on it eventually um and it's it's very like that in your writing, but when you're new, of course, you don't really have much to to judge it against. So I'll try and sort of to go through that, and we'll use that as a basis for, for thinking. Okay, how how are you going to go about tackling this major piece of work, and how long is it actually going to take you? So many people would call anything that was um, a thousand words or less, they'd probably describe it as flash fiction. 
I tend to think of a story, no matter how short, as a short story, because kind of the, the term flash fiction does suggest that you've kind of, you know, rushed it off or hurried it off or, you know, quickly come up with it. And kind of, I think that is sometimes a spirit of flash fiction. People say, OK, write this thing now, you know, for fun in the next hour or next two hours, you know, write this thing. Um, which is kind of can be a fun exercise and a nice break from from other work, but um, you know, as as a function of length, I don't think it particularly works because I can spend hours agonising over the, the words for a short story, and um, it, it, they can take a lot of work, and they are short story, even if they're very very short, they're still a short story. So you're looking at anything around a thousand words or less. Is, is kind of very short in terms of short stories. I mean, a short story could go up to something like about 10,000 to give you a guide. I mean, you may have have read some of these anthologies and collections of short stories, and probably a lot of those will be around the 10,000 mark because that's often a guide given out to the contributing authors. Um, I've, I've got a couple of stories in a, in a book called Ancient Enemies, which are um, some really quite nice sort of horror stories uh, on the... On the on the traditional, you know, werewolves, vampires, and things like that, and, and I kind of did a modern take of a, a werewolf and a, a vampire story, and um, they were about ten thousand each, and that that because if you get several of them, it makes them quite a nice book. Now the terms like novella and novelette are a bit of a, a bit of a movable feast. I mean, they're, they're kind of open to interpretation, but I think if you're looking at anything between about ten thousand and fifty thousand words you could probably call it something like a novella or a novelette 50,000 50k that's the number chosen by NaNoWriMo the National Novel Writing Month um, folks um, which I've never done I have intended to but I've always got something else you know I'm kind of in the middle of something usually when that happens uh, and I don't want to abandon it but um, that's a number that kind of sticks in people's minds where you can say oh yes I've written a novel now and it's fair enough but I mean I would say the, although it depends on the genre, 50k would be pretty short as far as novels go. Um, I think I, I'm told, I don't have the experience of this myself particularly, but I'm told erotica books tend to be quite short. So they're probably around 50k, but I don't know. I mean, you could sort of insert your own size matters joke at that point, I guess. But, um, you know, that's not something I'm an expert on, so I can't tell you. But I'm told they're shorter. And I think there are some kind of romances that read quite quickly as well. If they're in a big series sort of thing, and they're almost like episodes, they'll, they'll tend to be sort of, you know, perhaps around the 50k mark. I'm kind of guessing about those. They're, those aren't really my genres, certainly not at the moment. Nothing against them. They're just not my not my thing at the moment. Um, but if you're looking, you know, at a major sort of sci-fi epic or a fantasy book, they are often go to double that. They're often about 100,000 words and some of them are even longer so if you've got a favorite sort of big sort of doorstep of a massive crime book or something like that you know that could easily be a hundred thousand words or you know big sci-fi epic or a fantasy book fantasy books tend to be long i'm not sure why that is okay if you're looking at your first novel and it's just sort of a, a normal novel standalone type novel you're probably looking to sort of split the difference there so you're looking around seventy five thousand. I would I would say would give you a reasonable ballpark to aim at if you're not sure. It's good to have something to aim at. Um, but, and this is something often trotted out, the story does dictate the length. And I, I do believe that, actually, because um, when I started writing Cheat Code, um, which is doing quite well at the moment, but I started it out as a short project, a side project, really, in between doing other things. And I thought, if, if it gets to longer than 5,000, I'll be lucky. I'll count that, you know, a major win. I thought it might come out at sort of like two or three thousand, something like that. But when I got into it, I liked the characters. I liked the sort of setup that I'd done and the characters kind of came real to me. And when that happens, you you want to tell their story. You kind of feel this is my job to tell their story now and, and you go for it. And I, I think, you know, that's that's something that you kind of strive for as a writer. You want it to feel real to you so that you can make it feel real to the readers and when that happens, you don't turn your back on it and say, oh, well, I was only going to do 5,000. You know, you go for it. And so I did. And um, I think it came around at around 80, I think. Uh, somewhere around there anyway. Late High 70s to 80,000. OK, so, you know, let let the story dictate the length of, of what it takes to tell it. That's a slightly clumsy way of saying it, perhaps. But um, and that doesn't mean you, you can pad it out. It means if, if you, you know, if you've got 
enough material for a very short story and you pad it out to 75,000, you're not doing anyone any favours and it'll probably be a bit dull. So, you know, tell the story and only that. Don't, don't sort of pad it out too much. OK, so let's let's try and get towards this sort of idea of saying how long it's going to take you. So let's take a, a kind of nice round number, really easy one to do. Let's take 80,000. OK, so it's a standard standalone novel. Let's say there are 40 chapters in it and they're each around 2000 words. So that's quite a reasonable sort of, you know, thumbnail figure to aim for. Just just for illustration, I mean, there isn't an optimal length that um, your chapter should be. I'm not suggesting that at all. Um, though it will help your pacing of your overall novel if your chapters are themselves kind of like short stories. In other words, they should have the old beginning, middle and end, or I like to call it much more usefully since I um, came across the Story Grid podcast, which I've mentioned in other shows and the Story Grid book. Um, so you've got your hook, your beginning hook, your middle build and your payoff, your surprise ending type. Or, well, not necessarily surprise, but your ending payoff. Um, and if each chapter is like that, that really helps people to keep turning the pages because, you you know, don't tell them too much at the beginning or they're not going to need to read to find out. If they, if they think they know what's going to happen, I touched on this last episode, actually, they're not going to turn the page. You're not going to read the next chapter. So giving each chapter something to sort of get you into it, build up through it and then finish off. And another reason I am narrowing this down a bit to thinking about chapters, because I think it can feel very overwhelming, especially if it's your first novel, to think, OK, I've got to write these 80 or 100,000 words or even 50,000 words, whatever it is. And that can be very overwhelming. It can make you give up. I think, you know, especially really for most people, I still think about this. You know, I think, oh, I'm going to try and finish this chapter today or whatever. Just focus on those chunks and just get them done one at a time. You know, it's like if you've got some horrible job to do, you kind of think, oh, I never want to do that. But if you actually start, well, I'll do that bit first. And you think, oh, I might as well carry on now. And then, oh, that's not so bad. OK, I'll do the next thing. You know, it's kind of like that. Just sort of chunk it down a bit, work in chapters and say, you know, having that 2000 word for a chapter target in front of you is nothing like as bad as having to think about the whole massive um, target. You know, it's like if you're going on a long walk or a run or something and you think, well, I'll just get to that corner. I'll just get to that corner, you know, and um it's good to have something like that to focus on and it'll help you to sort of make your writing pack a punch as well. So I'm, I'm working on this chapter now. That's my focus. Make it count, you know, make it as good as I can get it. Um, so that takes us down the next logical step. How long was it going to take you to write those 2000 words? Well, all things being equal, and of course, they're not always, but say, you know, things are all going well generally and everything else then. You shouldn't really have any trouble with writing 500 words in an episode. And when I say episode, sorry, I mean a writing episode, a, um, an episode in which you have set aside time to say, I am writing for this, this period of time. You know, 500 words should come fairly quickly. Some days you'll have off days and, you know, you, you can't write more than about five words, but um, we all have those. Um, if 500 words is always a stretch for you, at a time, then probably something's wrong. And maybe it would be good to think about what the problem is that's, that's making you so stuck. I mean, I have covered what you do if you get stuck and how to sort of keep writing when times are rough in previous episodes. So you might want to look back and have a listen at those um, if you are t totally stuck day after day after day, because that's not a nice place to be. But I mean, 500 words isn't a huge amount. It might seem like it at first, but actually, once you start, you should be able to do it reasonably quickly now let's say you, you've got these you know writing little slots set aside and i know it's great to say oh every like, as everybody says and it is true write every single day and there are lots of people who say they do that you know even christmas and things but you know for a lot of people that's just not a reality so i'm not going to jam that down your throat um everybody needs a bit of time off as well but let's say um four days out of a week you can you can do those um those words i mean that's that's going to do your 2,000. So four days a week, 500 a, a day. And that's your 2,000. That's your chapter. So that's looking at about a chapter a week. So at that scale, without too much of a push, it's going to take 40 weeks in which you actually write. That's giving you a few days off each week. Um, and if you allow for holidays and so on, it can take you up to a year. That means 
But this totally depends on how long you're putting into it. You know, if you're sort of setting aside a whole day or something, then you might get loads and loads done. Um, if you're setting aside time every day equally, you know, I, I can't sort of go to every possibility because I have no idea what you're going to do. But just I would suggest you go through that's kind of a work through of an example. So you could kind of go through that process yourself and you can start thinking, OK, well, if I do this many days a week and be realistic, you know, give yourself some days off for, for real life and so on and time off holidays and things and just kind of plan it out a bit. And anyway, once you get going, you're going to get faster. The more you do it, you will get faster just anyway. That just seems to be the way it works, just through practice. But also, when you get into the thick of your story, hopefully you'll be enjoying it more. When you enjoy it, you will power through it better as you really get into it. Um, and you won't even realise then that you're getting you're getting faster as you go. But whatever you're doing, you know, um, just don't give up and you'll get there. I mean... Yeah, there'll be times when when real life will intrude and, you know, other things can be certainly a lot more important. So, you know, you can only sort of plan out and then, you know, hope and do your best and see what happens. But um, I think most of you listening could probably already do more than 500 words in a session, even to begin with. Um, But it's quite nice. Think about a baseline and kind of plan it out from that. Go through your own sort of method of your own calculations and get an estimate and it doesn't matter how rough it is, but, you know, give yourself the benefit of the doubt and sort of <laughs> just sort of assume you're going to finish this thing and go through and, you know, be kind to yourself. Don't make it an impossible target. And if you beat it, fine. That's great. But it, it's good not to not to leave it open ended. And so I'm writing a novel. I'm writing. I'll finish it one day. You know, that that is kind of a bit of a recipe for disaster. Perhaps you might never get around to it. So just, you know, be realistic and plan it out a little bit and every now and then write it down somewhere and every now and then revisit that and have a look at it uh, from time to time. And, um, you know, you just see how you're doing, how you're doing. If Hopefully you're beating it. Um, you can mark things off on a calendar, reward yourself for good days. You know, if I've really hit my t- gold star or whatever, or, um, you know, give yourself a treat or reward, a glass of wine, um, you know, a couple of chocolates, something, you know, something you enjoy. But, but do try and stick to your writing times if you possibly can. I mean, it might mean that you have to give something up, um, you know, hopefully nothing important like, you know, family time and things like that. But it might be that there's some trash on TV that you could easily live without, but you sort of waste time watching at the moment. Um, you know, say I'll watch my TV later, but it would be quality, something that I, you know, show I really enjoy or get a lot out of or something uh, rather than just sitting there kind of watching any old thing. But, you know, don't give up on the things that, that make life worth worth living, but um you know, I'm sure try and find some time somewhere that you can stick to those slots. And the answer that most people come up with, and there's no coincidence to this because it does kind of work pretty well, is to get up early um, and find that extra time that way. Now, that's how I started quite a few years ago. I I heard somebody, I think it was the writer, I'm not sure if she's still alive, P.D. James, who wrote sort of quite a lot of classic crime stories, an English writer. And um, I heard her speaking and she's decided that it was never going to be a good time. And she said, so she'd just get up early, you know, when everybody else was asleep and start. And I kind of thought, well, OK, uh, that's what I'll do then. And I did start it and that, that actually got me going in the first place. OK, so how long it's going to take overall will really depend on an awful lot of factors coming from you. It depends on the time you put in. But the take home message here is try and work it out. Try and make it so there's an end in sight. And in other words, define your own success. It's very easy at the moment. You know, there's people say, oh, come on my course and I'll teach you how to write a novel in five minutes. Whatever it's a ridiculous thing, you know, give me six hundred dollars and I'll teach you how to write a book in, you know, three days or something. Well, some people have done it. Um, Chris Fox, who has a YouTube channel and so on. He's done his 21 days was his latest challenge for a reasonably long sci-fi type novel. Uh, you know, there's the NaNoWriMo, where it's a month. Some people have done it. Some people have done it in one day. They've done NaNoWriMo in one day. I mean, those are all rather extreme examples and comparing yourself to them is not going to get you anywhere. I mean, it's, yeah, somebody writes a novel in, in a very short time. To me, that's kind of interesting in the same way that somebody sort of, you know, swimming the channel between uh, England and France is interesting, but I have no desire to do it myself. I mean, well done you and everything, but I really don't want to do that myself. It sounds like something of an ordeal. Um, so 
you know, these things are interesting, but don't compare yourself. Um, go for it in your own way. You're, su- you're in control of this. Your success is defined entirely by you. So kind of how long it takes is up to you, but do plan a time and then see how you're doing. You know, if you beat your own targets, then you can really give yourself a pat on the back. I mean, if X number of words a day is good for you, then that's wonderful. The the one thing you must try and do is just to stick to it and stick to it. And that will get you there in the end. So my first novel, I was doing it very kind of part time. I was looking after um, a couple of quite young children and my daughter was like younger than three when I started. Um, so there's very little time when I wasn't kind of um, called on to sort of look after them. And I just had to do it little bits when I could. So if she was at some, you know, she was occupied with like um, a play group or something like that when she got to be three years old. And uh, it's like kind of a nursery type kindergarten type thing, you'd maybe call it. Um, then, you know, you dash home scribble as many words as you possibly can and then dash in the car go and pick her up again you know it's just you kind of have to make use of those that's time and of course that first novel took me ages i tried to think i wish i had a record actually but I, I can't tell you you know certainly more than a year for me to write trespass and, and a, a quite a long time to kind of rewrite it and rewrite it afterwards but you know i'm not much quicker now and i'm much quicker because i stuck at it and you know i had, I had a bit of paper on my wall that said every word counts and I you know, I kind of believe that and I keep saying that as well to people that um, every single word even if it's the word the you know that was a word that wasn't in the world before you just put it there so so how long it takes is something for you to define but do define it and then see how you go okay on to the writer's toolbox section um, I do like to look around, um, you know, partly for your benefit as, as the listeners. I like to sort of, I see something, I think, oh, people might be interested in that. So I came across this bit of um, software advertised called um, the Novel Factory. And you, you should be able to find it online, but of course there'll be links in the show notes. And it struck me as being quite interesting because it's sort of, although you can use it, it seems to me anyway that you can use it in a kind of free form way. It does have a structure built in a kind of process built in which you can follow through and i like the fact there was a structure there for people who kind of thinking oh what do i do next you know how do i plan this how do i outline it how do i do it um and it's it wasn't too badly priced i haven't worked it out in dollars but of course it's probably quite it's an english company it's 25 pounds it's probably quite a good rate at the moment with what's happening to um the poor old pound against foreign currencies so but I'm not recommending it at this point because I haven't actually tried it yet. What I've done is I've obtained a review copy kind of on behalf of the um, the program. They have a, a short trial, I think seven days on the website if you want to look. What I'm going to do is is really have a, an in-depth go with it over a period of time. Start with this project that I'm doing and kind of work through it. And I think it could be worth uh, looking into, provided you've already got something, you've already got your main software needs kind of um catered for so if you've got things like word that you're using or scrivener that you're using i mean that's your first thing you need your drafting software uh, and this novel factory is kind of a a planning and, and an organizing type software and it integrates with scrivener which is rather clever so i'll just mention that at the moment and you can um, check that out yourself if you so desire but i will be just going to give you a heads up um i will be looking into that and it might be a number of weeks before i come back and i'll tell you all about it and say how i got on with it and kind of say, oh, I think it might suit this kind of person or that kind of person. So that's my kind of writer's toolbox, something to look out for at the moment. Oh, there's one other thing. Sorry. Um, there is, if you are got to the point where you're selling a few books um, or having people read them on Kindle Unlimited, then uh, well done you. Brilliant. Good news. Um, there's quite a nice thing where you can keep track of it, uh, which is called Book Report. And again, the site will be in the show notes. But uh, if you look for something like Get Book Report, it's quite an interesting Chrome browser plugin where you um, you go into your KDP dashboard where you've got all your reports and all your stats there. And then you click on this little button in your, your browser and it puts it into sort of uh, dollars and cents or even, it will do, even do pounds or whatever. It's got various currencies and it's uh, reasonably free to use. I think if you earn more than like $1,000 a month or something, they charge you. But, um, you know, it's it's there and you can um, get little graphs and see who, uh, well, you can see what's been read and what's um, which title has given you that bestseller. And you can look back over historical data and things like that. So 
might be quite nice if you've got some extra promotion going on you could look at your stats there in quite an easy way however of course looking at your stats will not sell you another book and it won't get you another word written so um there's this thing i think i've mentioned before i call it promotion paralysis it's very easy to think oh i'll you know get this promotion for my book and then i'll i'll sit and watch the stats skyrocket and of course you're not doing anything useful and then when they don't skyrocket or if they don't skyrocket quite as much as you hoped then um it's kind of a bit dispiriting so you know best not to sit and stare at your stats but at least i think this could be good because it's quick so you can have a quick glance and you see like a kind of pie chart thing of and you say oh okay that that's doing better than that and this has made you know so many pounds and pence or dollars and cents and things and you have a quick look and forget about it for the day so um Quite a fancy little thing, and as it seems to be free, that might be worth a look. Okay, well, I will finish there, and thank you very much for taking the time to listen, and thank you to everyone who's subscribed. If you haven't yet, we are on iTunes, and you can subscribe via the site at writingtalkpodcast.com, and you can even sign up for a service where it will email every new episode to you and there's all kinds of different ways of subscribing which all on the site i am having a little bit of trouble with stitcher at the moment the last episode at the moment is like 18 on there or something i've been frantically trying to get it to update so i'm not quite sure what's happening there um but itunes seems fine so that's kind of weird and of course you can get the latest episode always on the site and always on spreaker.com which is speaker with an r after the p and Thank you very much for your support and comments, questions, always welcome. Don't forget the Facebook group, which uh, is growing slowly, but it's always nice to have new members along. So, you know, we can help each other out. The idea of that is it's a very supportive place. We can support each other. Very positive. You know, we're not sort of pushing books on each other. We're just kind of helping each other out. And the more we, people we get in there, the better that will be. And the link will be in the show notes. I have certainly given it before. I don't know if I have it in front of me at the moment. But um, yeah, facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash WTP workshop. Of course, that's for Writing Talk podcast. But if you look on Facebook for WTP workshop, I should think that will find us. And you just request membership. And you can post if you've got any things you're struggling with, um, any kind of problems you want to air in there then we can help each other out of course you can help people out in turn make suggestions and so on uh, meet like-minded people and network and so on help each other out that'd be fantastic and any particular questions you have like somebody saying well how long does it take to write a novel then that could be the topic for a future episode or at least something if it's a quicker one then perhaps that would just be in the um, writing clinic uh, and i am thinking really if people have have a short passage so they're stuck on a short passage of writing they can actually paste that into the um into the facebook group and we'll have a look at that and see what we can do and see if we can come up with it and help directly uh we could do it anonymously if you prefer actually on the show but um it would just be nice just to just to do that as well so it really help people in a very direct way so there's the facebook group and there's the website and so on and so forth but thank you very much for popping along i have to say yes again because it's that important <laughs> and in the meantime until we do until we meet again for another podcast um keep writing keep scribbling keep tapping away at the keys and above all keep smiling goodbye <laughs>